Welcome back students to Chemistry 1510 video notes. We're going to be talking about chapter 5 today, stoichiometry with gases. So to get us started, let's look at a chemical equation. So we have one right here where it says two moles of hydrogen plus two, one mole of oxygen makes two moles of water. So in this case, take notice that all of these are in the gaseous state. So if the hydrogen and the oxygen and the resulting water are all at the same temperature and pressure, then if they contain the same volume, they'll have the same number of molecules. Let's draw a little picture over here as to what that might look like. So if we have a box with hydrogen in it and a box with oxygen in it, and they're both at the same temperature and the same pressure, and they have the same volume, then they're going to have the same number of moles present inside that box. One, two, three, four, five. So when we look at that relationship, we can really quantify it because having the same number of molecules directly relates to the mole that we learned in chapter three. Because remember, a mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules or atoms, or whatever particle we're considering. So when we have equal volumes of any gas, it doesn't matter the gas's identity, so it doesn't matter the size of the molecule, we'll have equal number of moles if temperature and pressure are constant. So let's look at what our standard temperatures and pressures are. So standard temperature is 273 Kelvin, which is the same as zero degrees Celsius. Standard pressure is one atmosphere, or 760 torr. So that's what we call STP. So when we talk about STP, we can extrapolate this to a standard molar volume. What that means is when we are at STP, so when we have one atmosphere of pressure and 273.15 Kelvins, then one mole of gas will take up 22.414 liters. Let's see how we can use this as a conversion factor in some stoichiometry problems. So down here, we've got a chemical reaction involving methane and oxygen. So it's asking us how many liters of oxygen will be consumed if four and a half liters of methane burns. So methane is CH4, and we're given four and a half mil, or not milliliters, liters to start with. So normally when we're doing stoichiometry, we're starting with grams, and in this case, we're starting with liters. So we need to find a different way to get into moles. Thankfully, we have our new conversion factor, the 22.414 liters for one mole of gas. Now, this particular number only works if we're at STP. So now that we're in moles of methane, we can use our balanced chemical equation to say that one mole of methane is going to require two moles of oxygen. And the question asked you for liters of oxygen, not moles of oxygen. And so we need one more step where we say that in one mole of oxygen at STP, we're going to have 22.414 liters. So this is going to get you 9.0 liters of oxygen. So let's look at one thing that can simplify this. Do you see how here you're dividing by 22.414 and here you're multiplying by 22.414? What we can do is essentially leave those two terms out and then this would work for any chemical reaction even if you weren't at STP. What I mean by that is if we leave those two terms out, we're assuming our constant temperature and pressure over the course of the reaction, but we don't actually have to be at STP. Because now instead of saying uh, one mole of methane reacts with two moles of oxygen, because our moles are proportional to our volume, we can now say one unit of volume, one liter of methane, will require two liters 
of O2 to simplify our calculations. So you can carry out this problem however you wish. Whichever one uh, makes you feel most comfortable is the one you should do. Either way, you'll get to the same final answer. All right, let's continue on to ideal gases. So when we start looking at ideal gases, ideal gases are uh, gases that behave in a very particular fashion. I'm calling them imaginary here because this is really something that doesn't often happen, but it helps simplify our calculations. So when we look at the ideal gas law, this is an equation that you are going to memorize. Just like how above that 22.414 liters, you're going to have that one memorized too. So when we look at a typical ideal gas law uh, equation or, or calculation, the thing that we need to make sure of is that whatever ideal gas constant we're using dictates the units. So we need to have the units here for pressure, volume, moles, and temperature to cancel with the units given in our ideal gas constant. So again, P is pressure, V is volume, N is moles, R is a constant that will be given, and T is temperature. So what I want to do is make a little list. And this is probably overkill for um, the future of your problems, but because it's our first one, we'll go into depth. We'll start with our 21.0 degrees Celsius, and we'll add our 273.15 to make sure that we're having the proper units. Because our ideal gas law has units of Kelvin, so we need to make sure that we convert to Kelvin. In addition to that, our ideal gas law has units of atmospheres, and we were given this problem in Tor. So we'll make sure to take a moment to convert from atmospheres to Tor. And then finally, we are given our uh, mass in grams, and we want moles. So we have to remember that nitrogen gas is one of our diatomic ones as we convert this. So we'll have 28 grams of nitrogen in one mole of nitrogen. So now that we have everything in the proper units, we can use our PV equals nRT. Oops, that's an ugly N. And we can solve for volume. So I'm just going to rearrange first and start plugging things in. So I just calculated my number of moles. R is always going to be given. It's annoying to write in those units, but it saves you. And I'm going to run out of room here, so 294 Kelvin. Oh, that looks awful. Let's try to make that a little bit nicer. And then we're going to divide by their pressure. When you solve for your volume, you get a 0 0.214 liters. And we'll just come back up to the question and recognize that it asks for it in milliliters. So by now, hopefully, we know that there's a 1,000 milliliters in a liter, so we can move that decimal place three times. OK, that's all for ideal guesses. And we will stop here. Thank you, as always, for your attention. This is Katoni. Signing out.